easier. So today's topic is residuals, and then we're going to do a residual plot, just like a scatter plot. Okay, so you can have residual points, just you can have like you can have points on a scatter plot, and also points on your line of best fit. Okay, so residuals help to determine if a curve or a shape is appropriate. Okay, is this data represent a linear model? When we do um, interest rates and questions like that, a rate of increase or decrease, that might be what type of model best fits that data? Is linear the best for that, or is it exponential or quadratic? So there might be a different type of model for the data you're looking at. Residuals measure how far, which is distance, the data fall from the regression line. Now your regression line is the line of best fit. It's the same thing. So to the right, I have noted the residuals as D1, the D for the distance. So for residual 1, Residual 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if you have different colors, let's note the points. So in green, or actually I'll use the purple, the scatter plot points. All the points on the scatter plot are here, here, so we can make the dots bigger if you don't have a color. Yep. So making it bigger, those are all the scatter plot points. Does that make sense? The line of best fit is in the middle, and those are called regression points, or we can say line of best fit points. So those are all the points on the line. So I know it was in blue, but I'm going to do it in green to make them stand out. We good so far? So the residual is the distance between the two, and since the lines are vertical, like this, we'll take D1. Over here is D1. What value doesn't change, the X or the Y? The X. So when you, find, when you want to find how long it is, or the distance between one point to the next, you subtract the Y because that's what's changing. Now, the order in which you subtract, so let's continue reading here, the distance between, or the distance measured, is the difference between the Y values of the actual scatter plot points and the y values of the regression points. Okay? So there's an equation residual equals actual minus predicted. So there's a way to remember it is wrap. The residual is actual minus predicted. So in our D1 what was the actual y value, the 2 or the 1.4? The actual y value was your scatter plot point. So it's the 2. It's this point right here. So D1 would be 2 minus 1.4, which is 0. Point yep. So distance, or D2, right here, that would be these next points. I have them in order. So the actual y value is a 1. So 1 minus 2.1 is a negative, excuse me, 1 point, nope, 1 minus 2.1. Uh, negative 1.1, 1. 1. good. D3. Just keep going in order. So once you take a minute to calculate D3, D4, D5 using the points. So D3 would be this next group of points, D4, D5. So actual minus predicted.
Now we have some positive, some negative. So D1 was positive. Which other ones are positive? D5, good. And there's one more. D3. So that is um, this residual right here, D1, D3, and D5. Those points are where, according to the line of best fit, are the positives. We have yet to write the points, so let's actually do that first. Um, the residual points would be the x value stays the same, and then it would be 2, and then 0 0.6, because that was our y value. Oops, it would be 1. Because that D1 went with these points. So 1, 0 0.6, 2, then negative 1.1, 1 .1, 3, 0 0.7, 4, negative 0.5, and then the last one was 5, 0 0.3. So this is D5. D4, D3, D2, D1. So the residuals that were positive, yeah, are above the line of best fit. And the ones that are negative are below. Now, those distances are pretty small, right? If we had, say, a point that was off our grid way up here, the distance away from the line would be much larger, right? And even if it was farther away, these points that are much farther away are called what again? Outliers, outliers okay? So any outlier is going to have a significant uh, difference would be a larger residual, okay? So down here, a residual plot. So it's taking these points now and plotting them on an axis, which we're going to do on the calculator. In the residual plot, Okay, it's just a graph that shows the residuals on the vertical axis. That's your y-axis. So your residuals are here. And then the other piece of data is on the bottom. So I'm just going to abbreviate residuals on the y-axis. And then um, the other piece of data. One more question before we go below. What happens if the point... The scatter plot point was right on the line of best fit. What would be the residual? Zero. Very good. Because that's the distance away would be zero, right? Because it, it lands right on the line. Good. So down below, okay, if right here, if the points in a residual are randomly dispersed, here's the random pattern. Okay? Around the horizontal axis, which is your x-axis, then we have a linear regression. If it's not randomly dispersed, so you see a pattern, like you see over here, this represents a U-shaped curve. Okay, so non-random, that's a non-linear model, which we'll look at more next class. So a random pattern shows a linear model is a good fit. They're evenly distributed above and below the x-axis, okay? On the back, we're going to look at the following residual plots. And tell me, take a minute to look at which ones are a good fit for a linear model. Just take a look. Are they a good fit for the linear model? The first one, is that a good fit? No. So this is not a good fit. Why? Is the data evenly dispersed? No, I mean it looks pretty close though, right? Maybe uh, slightly off, but is there a pattern in the data? Yeah, so it's not a good fit um, since there's a pattern in the plot. I mean, it kind of looks like something like this, which was a function we did learn about this year. Maybe we didn't look at it this year. 
Um, we'll come back to that after I stop the video. This one. Does it look pretty much a good fit? Does it look like it's about evenly dispersed above and below? Kind of random? Yeah, so this is a good fit. Um, plot is random and evenly dispersed. The last one, is it random? But is it evenly dispersed? No, it's only above, right? It's only above, if I can see the line. Oh, actually, no, it looks like that's zero. This is a very poor graph, which would be your x-axis. We have this big cluster as well. What are these called up here? Outliers. Outliers, good. So this is not a good fit, OK? Number two, the table below contains the values of all the residuals computed for a linear model. We looked at this last class, okay? How did, we looked at how the number of hours you study affected your region score, do you remember? So now we're gonna take a look at the residuals for this data. So when you actually calculate the residual in the table right here, residual think wrap, it's the actual minus predicted, so you're going to subtract these two scores. So go ahead and subtract and tell me or fill in the two rows in the table. Raise your hand when you have the first one. Chris? What's that? Nope. 11.41. And then the next one? Yeah, Michelle? 8.87, good. Now, before you can get the residuals, you have to have a line of best fit. So we're going to do part A. We're going to use the data from the table to write the regression. So enter your data. So take a minute, open up your calculator. Well, let's edit the data. Run your regression to get your line. All right, hopefully I have this right. So stat, calculate, regression is four, AX plus B. Hit enter. I don't see R, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my diagnostics on, second catalog. Let's go to the Ds, scroll down. Go ahead, write out your line. Now stat, calc, Regression, I see the R value. I didn't need it, but we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. So it's going to be Y equals A was um, 6.273 to the nearest hundredth. It would be 6.227. Good. So there's the slope, uh, 6.27, and then the Y intercept would be 49 point, going back to the calculator, that 9 is going to round the 7 up to 78. 78. Good. Um, create the residual plot. So we're going to take, and this is going to be our y value with this x value. So the first point would be 3, 11.41 coming from the table. Second point would be 
5, 8.87. So take a minute to plot your residuals. Okay, you're going to look at the residual plot. And remember, this was the study hours. So you're taking this column as x and this column as your y value. So take a minute to plot your points on your paper while I do it up here. Okay? Some of them are going to be off, like the first one, 311.41, so you can just put a dot off since they didn't give you large enough scale. 5, 8.87. 12.8, it's even higher. 6, negative 7.4, 7, negative 3.67, 1, negative 6.05, 2, 2.68, 7, negative 8, point six seven. 1 is way down, and then last 7.6, or 7, and then 6, 3, 3. So it should be a total of 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is it evenly dispersed about the x-axis? Is it evenly dispersed and random? Yeah. So we did part B, create a residual plot. Based on the residual plot, so we have, um, this is a typo. Based on it's the same thing. Uh, state whether the equation is a good fit. Okay. The equation is a good fit because our residual plot, the points are dispersed, randomly dispersed, even, random and evenly dispersed. So the linear equation is a good fit since the points of the residual plot are random and evenly dispersed about the what axis? Yeah. Before we do the last two, which are really short and easy, I'm going to show you how to do a residual plot. So turn your plot on and go to the scatter plot. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So go to um, second stat plot. Turn the plot on, enter, I know I'm trying to go back up, enter, over, down, run, scatter plot. Now, I want list one to stay, right? X stays the same. List two, do I want to graph list two? No, I want the residuals, okay? To get the residuals, go over here and go to um, above stat. It says list. Do second stat, which gives you list one, list two, but more importantly, gives you the residual. So plot seven. So, oh, you want to know why? You didn't run the regression with us. You can't get the residuals until you have a line of best fit, right? So you didn't get the equation with us. So you can't, you won't see the residual piece. So go quickly and sheet of stat, calc, and then four. You have to run the regression to get the line of best fit because a residual is the distance the point is from the line. So in order to see that, now when you go to your second stat plot, and it should still be on, now when you go to that list, you should see residual. Okay, now hit graph, and there's the hit stat, or I'm sorry, zoom, nine, and that'll make it better looking. So that's the residual plot, okay? All right, last part. Uh, so there's a linear regression equation. So this is a new equation, a new problem. So for this equation, there's a predicted value of five, 
74.5. What is the residual? The residual when the actual point was this. All you do is take the two y values and do what with them? Subtract. Subtract. But what's the order? Think wrap. Actual 90 minus 74.5. The residual is going to be. Count 5 up to get 75. And then how far from 75 to 90? 75 and 5 is 80. 15 and a half. Last one. So a state assessment question. Here's your scatter plot. Uh, it also has linear regression or line of best fit. You see that right there? So the question says which residual plot and correlation coefficient, which is your R, best model this regression curve? Well, this curve is a line, right? Isn't the curve a line? So what type of residual plot should you see? No, a residual plot should be scattered, right? Evenly dispersed and no pattern, right? Random. So if you look down below, and what's true about the correlation coefficient? Should it be positive or negative? Positive. So let's look at the R's. And we have an R negative here and here. These are both positive and they have the same R. But which set of points is more random and evenly dispersed, three or four? Nope. Three is random. That's what you want is that random and evenly dispersed. So choice three is the answer.